How do people usually describe planets? Massive, freezing, boiling hot, seismically active. Let's admit it, shiny is not normally on the list. Unless we're talking about a world called LTT 9779b, which might be the shiniest planet we've ever seen. This exoplanet, which is basically any planet outside our solar system, is ultra-hot and acts like a giant space mirror because it's covered with a thick layer of reflective metallic clouds. This unusual world is located about 264 light-years away from our planet. And the most amazing thing about it is that it reflects approximately 80% of all the light its parent star sends its way. For comparison, Earth reflects a mere 30% of the light it gets from the Sun. The bizarre exoplanet is even more reflective than the shiniest planet in the solar system, Venus, which reflects around 75% of sunlight due to its thick clouds. LTT 9779b is five times as large as Earth, which makes it the largest space mirror ever discovered. By the way, this world was found by NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey satellite mission in 2020. But the highly reflective nature of the planet was uncovered later thanks to a follow-up investigation conducted by the European Space Agency Exoplanet Hunting Spacecraft, CHEOPS, which stands for Characterizing Exoplanet Satellite. Now, imagine a planet the size of our ice giant Neptune. It's a burning world floating close to its star. If you stepped on its surface and looked up, you'd see heavy clouds of metals floating over your head, raining down titanium droplets. The planet's size, coupled with its insane temperatures, allow astronomers to classify the planet as an ultra-hot Neptune. Now, a planet's high reflectivity is a quality known as albedo. And in the case of our shiny world, its albedo mystifies scientists. All because most planets that are not ice worlds or planets with thick layers of reflective clouds, like Venus, normally have low albedos. Their atmosphere, or surfaces, simply absorb the light coming from their stars, preventing it from getting reflected back into space. And initially, researchers were sure that LT9779b would have a low albedo. After that, by no means was it an ice world not with the surface temperatures reaching 3,650 degrees Fahrenheit on the side of the planet permanently facing its parent star. It was supposed to be too hot for water clouds to form. Even clouds of metal or glass wouldn't be able to form in such a scorching climate. Astronomers expected a planet like that to have its atmosphere destroyed by its star, which would leave behind a lifeless, rocky world. That's why discovering metallic clouds was so unexpected. Of course, researchers were eager to find out how such clouds could have formed. It had remained a mystery until they decided to think about the cloud formation in the same way as condensation that appears in the bathroom after you take a hot shower. There are two ways to steam up your bathroom. You can cool the air until the water vapor condenses, or you can keep hot water running until clouds form. It will happen when the air in the bathroom becomes so saturated with vapor that it won't be able to hold it anymore. So, researchers came to the conclusion that, most likely, the atmosphere of the shiny planet became oversaturated with silicate at one point. And then, metal started vaporizing due to boiling hot temperatures on the permanent day side of the planet. But if you think that the reflective nature of LT9779b is its only unusual feature, you might want to hear this. The exoplanet is an example of an extremely rare planetary type, an ultra-hot Neptune. Astronomers have been searching for such planets for decades, but those preferred to remain a mystery. The fact that the planet survived so close to its star might be linked to its high reflectivity. Some experts believe that the metal clouds covering the planet probably reflect light and prevent the planet from overheating and evaporating. 
Plus, such a highly metallic atmosphere is much heavier and harder to blow away than any other. Now, about 850 light years away from Earth, a planet called WASP 121b orbits its star. This planet is a hot Jupiter, which means it's a gas giant moving very close to its star. And because of such a short distance, the planet is also insanely hot. The average day temperature there is around 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Interestingly, just like our previous shiny world, this planet also has metallic clouds floating over its surface. But that's not the only oddity. WASP-121b has a bizarre oblong shape. Can it be because the planet is tidally locked to its star? It means that one of its sides always faces the star, while the other is always turned to the darkness of the cosmos. In other words, it's always daytime on one side of the planet and nighttime on the other, which causes crazy temperature differences. Researchers think it might be the reason for the metallic clouds. The water cycle on WASP-121b is also pretty bizarre, to say the least. On the illuminated side, the atoms that make up the planet's water get ripped apart by the insane temperatures. After that, they get blown by winds moving at 11,000 miles per hour to the other side of the planet. There, much lower temperatures allow the atom to recombine into water molecules. At the same time, the nighttime side is cold enough for metal clouds consisting of iron and corundum to form. When these clouds migrate to the daytime side of the planet, they vaporize and rain down metal on the planet's surface. But if these clouds don't seem impressive enough, I've got more. Astronomers predict that the planet will rip itself apart in the next several million years because of its incredibly fast winds and wild temperatures. Plus, the gravitational pull of the planet's parent star also plays its role in this dark prediction. Since WASP-121b is so close to the star, the star's gravity pulls the planet into a weird oblong shape and makes gases like iron and magnesium leak from the planet's atmosphere. This pull is so strong that the planet is always on the verge of a tidal disruption. If it ever happens, the planet will come apart for good, metallic clouds and all. Just 20 light years away from the sun, which isn't such a great distance when we talk about space, a bizarre rogue planet is roaming our home Milky Way galaxy. But even though this planet doesn't orbit any star, it still has an incredibly powerful magnetic field. It's 4 million times stronger than Earth's magnetic field. The exoplanet also produces amazing auroras. When it was discovered in 2016, astronomers were almost sure they had detected a brown dwarf, which is an object too large to be a planet and too small to be a star. But later, scientists got some proof that the space object wasn't big enough to be a brown dwarf. The planet sure is a mammoth among its peers. It's 1.2 times as wide as the largest planet of the solar system, Jupiter, and more than 12 times as heavy. Astronomers think the exceptionally strong magnetic field helps the planet produce the auroras. But the most curious thing is that they're generated in a different way than auroras on Earth. It might be because the exoplanet's moon helps the planet create these light shows. Another planet you probably shouldn't set foot on is WASP-76b. There, it rains iron on the night side of the planet. And the temperature on the daytime side rises up to 4,300 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to vaporize most metals. This exoplanet is a bit larger than Jupiter in terms of size and is located 640 light years away from Earth. Such terrifying weather conditions in this world are caused by its unusual orbit. The distance between the planet and its parent star is 10 times shorter than the distance between Mercury and the Sun. 
Ah, you're on the grass, looking up at the blue sky, enjoying some singing birds and catching some rays. You watch different shaped clouds soaring slowly, high up in the air. Suddenly, you hear a powerful loud rumble coming from far away. You get up and notice a gigantic thick cloud ahead. But it's not the size that scares you, it's the shape. The cloud looks like a skull. Eh, don't worry, it doesn't mean anything bad's gonna happen. Anyway, it's not even a cloud. A few years ago, a skull formed out of thick smoke over Mount Vesuvius in Italy. That's the same volcano that erased the ancient city of Pompeii from the face of the Earth. Of course, back then, many people were afraid that the volcano would erupt again. Luckily for everyone, the volcano's still in a deep sleep. It was just a nearby forest fire that caused the famous skull cloud. But the locals weren't so sure. Some thought that the fire and the skull were set on purpose. Eh, wouldn't be the first time. Centralia, Pennsylvania. Population, well, just look around. Looks a little scary. Bare trees, no animals, no people. All the buildings are empty. Roads are all cracked and strewn with gravel. No cars, obviously. Thick smoke everywhere. This town's been burning for more than 50 years. Centralia used to be a mining town. One of its coal mines was abandoned, and locals used it as a dump for their trash. Then, according to most people, the city decided to get rid of the trash in the usual way, by burning it. The plan was a major failure. Hmm, let's see what could have possibly gone wrong here. The trash fire got deep into the mine's tunnels, ignited the coal that's still down there, and has been burning steadily ever since. The level of carbon dioxide shot up, and they had to shut down the other mines nearby for safety. No one could stop the fire, and the underground flames spread beneath the city. Roads began to warm up, the soil went sour, and the streets slowly filled with smoke and smog. In 2017, there were only five people living there. Welcome to Abraham Lake in Canada. It's completely frozen. You step onto the transparent ice and look down at what lies beneath. No fish, just some mysterious frozen bubbles. They look like small clouds frozen in ice, or jellyfish who forgot to pack a winter jacket. There are thousands of these little bubbles made up of methane. But don't try to dig a hole in the ice to touch it. Methane is highly flammable. It's created by methane-producing bacteria that eats leaves, grass, insects, and any other organic stuff that gets into the lake. When the methane touches the frozen water, it turns into tens of thousands of frozen little balls. When the ice melts, they burst open and sizzle. If you lit a match over them at just the right moment, the lake would look kind of like an erupting volcano. Similar lakes can be found near some shores of the Arctic Ocean. There, the size of the bubbles can reach several times the size of hot air balloons. Beautiful for sure, but not exactly safe. The next shocking lake is in Indonesia, on the island of Java. You come to a majestic volcano overgrown with grass and trees. The volcano seems to be asleep, but smoke is pouring out of it. You, of course, climb to the summit. Exhausted, tired, sweaty, you're ready to cool off. Nice work, you made it to the top. You look into the mouth of the volcano. Hmm, no boiling lava, just a beautiful, bright, turquoise lake down there. It looks like an oasis. Perfect time for a refreshing dip. You run down and get ready to jump in. But that's not water, that's acid. Sulfurous gases get into the lake from under the volcano. The lake itself is full of metals. When the gases touch them, they form that beautiful turquoise water, I mean acid. Better head back to the nearest village, rest and come back at night when it's cooler. In the dark, the lake seems to grow. Right above it, you see light-filled exploding little clouds. The sulfurous gases rise out of the lake, combine with the air, and flash bright blue. Still, don't get too close. Up in the sky, underground, volcanoes, lakes? Hmm. Time to head out to sea. You get on a yacht and sail off. It doesn't matter where, this next one happens all over the world. So, the sea is crystal clear and calm, there's no wind in your sails. Everything is so peaceful… wait, what's that? You hear a loud, loud noise. 
Two seconds later, a huge wave, way taller than your mast, rises from the calm sea and hits your yacht. The ship manages to stay upright, and the huge wave disappears. You just survived the attack of a rogue wave. Some scientists think it happens when the surface sea current smashes into a strong headwind. Others say it happens when warm and cold currents come up against each other. Another popular theory is wave interference, where small waves team up to form one monster one. Under certain conditions, waves get a sort of superpower. Out of all the waves in the area, there'll be one which sucks the energy out of all the others. When it's full, the wave spits it all out. Maybe that's why the wave's so strong, but only lasts an instant. What about clouds? Scary? Well, they can be, if they're huge thunderclouds, walls of gray and black blocking out the sun, the moon, and the stars. First, you're relaxing in your backyard, then you see thunderclouds. Then you get thunderstorms, hail, floods, and even tornadoes. They're easy to spot thanks to their epic appearance. Thick, heavy, and dark. They can even sparkle inside because of lightning. That's one scary-looking cloud. But before you run away, let's see how it forms. Clouds are like roller coasters. Imagine you're a small drop of water, hanging out with your friends in the ocean, waiting in line for the brand new ride that just opened up. It's time! You strap in. Nothing happens. Then you feel it. The roller coaster starts to go up, up, up! You can see all your droplet friends down there. They're so small. You keep rising, just waiting for the big whoosh. But nothing happens. Then you're so high up that you're in the clouds. It's not so scary up here, and there are loads of your friends. <laughs> nice. It's starting to get cold. You look around. It's happening to everyone. You're being turned into beautiful ice crystals. So shiny and pretty. The clouds filling up getting kind of cramped with all those other water droplets. Still, what a peaceful, enjoyable… wow! The ride kicks back in and you start to freefall. Slowly at first, then faster and faster, thousands of your fellow drops falling back to Earth, some holding on tight to the handrail, some laughing and waving their hands in the air. Woohoo! And splash! Still, I like the lightning ride better. That's one where they strap you in, you ride up, and then you play bumper cars way up in the clouds. The more times you bump into another water droplet, the more lightning you create. Now, not all lightning happens inside clouds. There's a rare phenomenon called a dirty thunderstorm. The lightning happens above a volcano, the most famous is in Japan. It erupts almost every day and spits black clouds high into the air. So, it's super scary volcano clouds, plus lightning. Regular lightning happens during a storm when ice crystals bump into each other. In a dirty thunderstorm, bits of volcanic ash collide, create friction, and spark up the sky. Okay, better finish the journey with something safe and beautiful. No more cloud roller coasters, please. You're in the Atacama Desert in northern Chile, one of the driest places on Earth. But this desert has a beautiful secret. Every three to five years, flowers pop up out of nowhere. It's so famous, it's also called the flowering desert. Seeds lie around in the ground, just waiting for some rain. When the desert gets enough water, about 200 types of flowers sprout up. The yellow sands of the Atacama turn purple, white, green, and pink. Hey, ever heard of a fire rainbow? Yeah, me neither. How about a circumhorizontal arc? Didn't think so, but just so you know, they're one and the same thing. At first glance, it looks like a painting, or like a rainbow-colored splash in the sky. Despite the name, they have nothing in common with either fire or rain. This phenomenon happens on rare occasions when the sun shines through a particular type of ice cloud formation. The rainbow halos are just as unique. Again, a specific type of ice crystals and clouds needs to be present for the surface of the Earth to bend light from the Sun into a perfect ring. The same thing can happen with moonlight. The only difference will be that moon halos are usually white, and sun halos can be rainbow-colored. When visiting regions with high altitudes, you may be one of the lucky people to stumble upon penitentes. They're basically naturally formed ice spikes. For them to be formed, 
They need a really cold and elevated environment where the air is dry. The sunlight turns ice directly into vapor rather than melting it into water. And that's why these blades of snow and ice start to pop up on the surface of the Earth. As cute as they may be, they can end up as tall as 15 feet. Now, what happens when small individual droplets of lava meet the wind? Pele's hair, basically. Let me explain. The word Pele comes from an ancient Hawaiian symbol for volcanoes. Whenever the wind picks up little drops of lava, it stretches them into hair-like strands, similar to the process of glass wire creation. These delicate strands can stretch as far as 6 feet. On rare occasions, it can rain without any clouds. But does it really? Let's look at the science behind this rare phenomenon. It's sometimes called a sun shower just because it looks like the rain is falling straight from the sun. Let's be clear though, there is no way rain can ever come down directly from a star. Rain clouds are at a bit of a distance from that specific location. With sun rays being angled, the clouds become out of sight. Add a little wind to blow the rain in your direction and ta-da! you get sun showers. Located in Bolivia is a place called Salar de Uni. It's the largest salt flat in the world. It's also the home of half of the world's lithium, which is a crucial component for making batteries. But what else is so special about this place? Well, whenever the rain season comes, it turns this piece of flat land into a perfectly reflective mirror lake. What comes to your mind when you hear about the Blood Falls? A horror movie? (laughs) Well, they are merely a series of waterfalls located in one of the driest regions of Antarctica. They emerge from an underground lake filled with a special kind of bacteria. These little organisms use sulfates as fuel instead of sugars, which makes them very intriguing for scientists. The water contained in this lake is so full of iron that it basically just rusts when it meets the air. Hence, the reddish color of the waterfall, which also gives it its trademark name. Okay, we all know the song, but it's not really made up. There is actually such a thing called a desert rose. It's not a plant, though, but a unique form of the mineral gypsum. It develops in dry sandy places that can occasionally flood. This constant switching between a wet and dry environment lets the gypsum crystals emerge between grains of sand, trapping them and forming a rose-like shape. Ever heard of the Eye of Sahara? Scientists are still trying to figure out how it was formed. You can only see it if you fly above it, but it's basically a naturally formed dome that dates back to approximately 100 million years ago. And no, I wasn't around then. It has a rough diameter of 25 miles and consists of a bunch of concentric rings. The biggest one, or the central area, measures about 19 miles in diameter. Astronauts were some of the first people to notice it, and it's been studied ever since. In fact, even to this day, when landing in Florida, they know they're almost home when they see the Eye of Sahara. One of the most beautifully colored trees in the world is located in the Philippines and Indonesia. It's called the rainbow eucalyptus. It got its name because of its bark that switches colors and peels away as the tree ages. The bright green bark is the youngest, as it contains a substance called chlorophyll, usually found in leaves. It then switches to purple and then to the color red. And finally, it turns brown as it grows and loses the chlorophyll. Now, don't be tricked into thinking that's a whole forest. It's one single tree. And no, it's not some sort of optical illusion either. Let me explain. Underneath that soil, there is a complex network of roots that connects around 47,000 tree-like shapes you see above the ground. It's called the quaking aspen. Some of these trees are among the oldest and largest organisms in the world. Now, here's a good destination for all travelers, or maybe not so good after all. The most lightning-stricken area in the world, according to recent data released by NASA, is Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela. Out of all the days in a year, 300 of them feature thunderstorms in this location. What makes this area so unique, though, that storms happen so often? Well, it's because where cool mountain air meets the warm, moist breeze and generates electricity over the lake. The Eternal Flame Falls are located in upstate New York, 
near the Canadian border. In this region, there is a tiny waterfall with a big secret – a spark about 8 inches tall. Turns out there's a natural gas seat that provides fuel to the flame behind the waterfall. The waterfall provides enough coverage so that it stays lit pretty much every time. Hikers do enjoy to relight it if they see that it's been blown out. This phenomenon is actually quite common, but this one gained more popularity because it is younger than most. And it looks very good in pictures, let's be honest. I've heard of yellow sand, white sand, and even black sand here or there. But I've never heard of green beaches until now. Papacolia, also known as Green Sand Beach, is located in Hawaii and is one of the few beaches in the world that features green sand. The unique coloring comes from olivine rock that was formed when a nearby volcano erupted. Actually, in Hawaii, all the volcanoes are nearby. Move over green sands because some of the other beaches around the world can even glow at night. And it's completely natural. The culprit? A little thing called photoplankton, or microalgae, as they're sometimes called. They're basically little plants that contain chlorophyll and need sunlight in order to live and grow. Most photoplankton kinds are able to float in the upper part of the ocean, where the sunlight can still reach them beneath the water. When the photoplankton gets agitated by the movement of waves and currents, they emit light, which looks like some glow during the night. These special microorganisms are found on beaches in a lot of places around the world, such as the Maldives, Puerto Rico, and the Everglades. At the base of a mountain located just outside of Afton, Wyoming, is a little river called the Intermittent Spring. There are only three of this kind in the whole world, but what makes this little string of water so mysterious? Well, the fact that it starts and stops every few minutes. Scientists have yet to pinpoint precisely why this happens. They speculate that it's basically just a siphon effect that happens deep within the ground that causes the river to just start and stop so often. Should you ever be interested in checking it out, be sure to do so in the late summer, as that's when the intermittent spring is most active. Do you see the irony here? You can only see the spring in the summer? Okay, I'm done. Look at this ominous dark cloud! Is it rotating? What on earth is happening here? What you see is called a supercell. It's a storm, often a thunderstorm, that contains an updraft rotating about a vertical axis. That's why they're also called rotating thunderstorms. There are actually four types of thunderstorms. Single cell, multi-cell, squall line, and supercell. Out of them all, supercells are the rarest and the most severe. They're typically isolated from other thunderstorms and last for two to four hours. Supercells are very common for the Great Plains of the United States. In particular, the area known as Tornado Alley. But they can occur in other parts of the world, too. For example, in Europe, Argentina, Uruguay, and southern Brazil. These storms can be any size, large and small, high or low topped. Supercells are also associated with the most severe tornadoes, even though not every supercell can create one. These storms usually produce great amounts of torrential rainfall and hail, and are accompanied by powerful winds and downbursts. Downbursts are powerful winds that come down from a thunderstorm. Once they hit the ground, they spread out very quickly. These winds are dangerous, since they can cause a lot of damage. Even though they're often confused with tornadoes, downbursts are a totally different phenomenon. Let's have a look at how a downburst forms. At the beginning of a thunderstorm, there's a powerful updraft. That's why the cloud grows vertically and hailstones and raindrops start forming inside. The storm matures, and the updraft keeps feeding the cloud with unstable, moist air. Hailstones and raindrops are now big and heavy enough to fall to the ground. But sometimes, the updraft is so strong that it suspends huge amounts of hail and rain in the upper part and the center of the storm. But let's say some dry air gets into the middle and lower parts of the storm it can cause a downburst. When it happens, all that amount of rain and hail from the upper part of the storm dashes toward the ground, dragging along a lot of air. All this mass gains speed, 
and when the downburst eventually reaches the ground, it's like a stream of water coming out of a faucet and hitting the sink. It spreads in all directions at an incredible speed, sometimes more than 100 miles per hour. But what you might most likely come across is called a microburst. It means that those terrible winds are confined to an area smaller than 2.5 miles across. While speaking about tornadoes, I can't but mention volcanic tornadoes. They're possibly one of the scariest natural phenomena. When a volcano erupts, it throws hot rock and ash high into the atmosphere. As for lava pieces and hot gases, they travel down the volcano's slope. When this flow is moving down, some of the gases trapped inside begin to rise and spin at the same time. They get squeezed by the surrounding air, which makes them spin faster and faster. That's how a volcanic tornado gets born. On the bright side, this phenomenon has a very short lifespan. If you ever see a tight burning column of air, that's a fire tornado, a creepy combination of whirlwind sounds and scorching inferno. This phenomenon is also called a fire twister or fire whirl. This dangerous natural phenomenon mostly occurs during wildfires. While burning, such fires create a big area of boiling hot air just above the ground. And when this scorching air gets mixed with the cooler air higher up, it results in a whirlwind that churns up burning debris and flames. The most powerful fire nados can stretch hundreds of feet into the sky. Another dangerous natural phenomenon is called a snow squall. If you get caught in a snow squall while driving, you won't find a safe place on a highway because this is an intense, but thankfully pretty short, period of heavy snowfall that comes along with powerful gusty winds and sometimes even lightning. People have known about this phenomenon for quite some time, but the term itself, as well as the warning associated with this danger, appeared only in 2018. Another danger of snow squalls is something called a flash freeze. Come to think of it, it makes sense. Rapidly dropping temperatures and freshly fallen snow glaze highways very fast. This makes controlling your car almost impossible. The next curious phenomenon I'm going to talk about happens extremely rarely and is still poorly understood. It's usually not something big and turbulent. Dust devils can be tiny and vanish within minutes. They've got lots of names, whirlwinds, dusters, and sand spouts. Dust devils look like funnels of sand spiraling upward from the ground. But unlike their terrifying relatives, tornadoes, these babies are normally nothing to worry about. And still, according to the definition, dust devils fall in the same category as hurricanes and tornadoes. All three natural phenomena feature a column of air kind of spinning around an invisible pole. They're all formed during the collision of different types of air, moist versus dry, or hot versus cold, and so on. But hurricanes usually form over a body of water where cold air slides under warm air. Tornadoes spiral down from the sky when hot air rises through a mass of cold air, and dust devils form on the ground. Even though we call them dust devils, they can actually swirl any loose debris. The main criteria, the pieces have to be small and light enough to be lifted by a fast-moving vortex. By the way, do you know that some clouds can predict extreme weather? For example, shelf clouds. They look like something from a sci-fi movie. They form when warm and moist air gets caught in a thunderstorm updraft. These ominous clouds most often mean a storm is coming. Those huge white lumps over your head are called mammatus clouds. They can make you believe the sky is falling. Most clouds form when air rises into the atmosphere, but mammatus clouds appear when moist and cool air goes down and mixes with dry air. The result is these unique puffed rice clouds. By the way, if you see this phenomenon in the sky, bad weather is just around the corner. Morning glory clouds are extremely rare and harmless. They look like massive tubes stretching across the sky. They can snake for more than 600 miles, sitting relatively low. 
Most researchers agree that these clouds appear when an updraft squeezes through the cloud. This creates the signature rolling appearance. The cool air at the back of the cloud makes it sink downward. The best, but not the only, place to see the morning glory is Australia's Gulf of Carpentaria. If you decide to travel there to see these clouds, choose a period from late September to early November. Ever seen huge round disks in the sky? Most likely, those were lenticular clouds. They usually form over large and high places, like mountains or hills. When strong wind bumps into some barrier, this creates an air wave. The air kind of wraps around the obstacle. And the higher the barrier is, the colder the air that is rising over it becomes. At some point, the moisture it contains turns into water droplets. And they form these unusual clouds. Lenticular clouds can look like waves, a pizza, or even a stack of pancakes. And these clouds, on the contrary, form low in the sky and after some bad weather. Rainbow clouds appear on top of puffy low-altitude clouds after thunderstorms. They usually hover at the height of around 6,000 feet. When the water vapor they contain condenses, the resulting droplets act like prisms. This forms multicolored caps over the clouds. And a pretty scary bonus fact for you. One of the most common causes of wildfires is lightning from thunderstorms. But have you ever heard of a wildfire that triggered a thunderstorm? Well, now you know. It happened on May 11, 2018, not far from Amarillo, Texas. Then, the super-powerful Mallard Fire not only created a massive dense cloud high in the air, but its heat also caused a violent thunderstorm that later dumped tons of quarter-sized hailstones 60 miles away in Wheeler County, Texas. Well, this happened in June 2009. People in certain areas in Japan left their homes after a heavy downpour, only to find fish, frogs, and tadpoles everywhere. Fields, roads, lawns, rooftops were littered with these aquatic creatures. One man was shocked to see 13 carp on and around his truck. Apparently, he stopped to count them. No one knows for sure where the bizarre rain came from. But the most popular theory claims that a powerful water spout picked up all these creatures, then it carried them through the upper atmosphere and dropped the animals on the unsuspecting people below. Shelf clouds look like something from a sci-fi movie. They form when warm and moist air gets caught in a thunderstorm updraft. These ominous clouds most often mean a storm is coming. Breathtaking rainbow clouds appear on top of cotton-like puffy clouds after thunderstorms. The puffy clouds are low-altitude ones. They usually hover at a height of around 6,000 feet. When the water vapor they contains condenses, the resulting droplets act like prisms. This forms multicolored caps over the clouds. Morning glory clouds are extremely rare. They look like massive tubes stretching across the sky. They can snake for more than 600 miles, sitting relatively low. Most researchers agree that these clouds appear when an updraft squeezes through the cloud. This creates the signature rolling appearance. The cool air at the back of the cloud makes it sink downward. The best, but not the only place to see morning glory, is Australia's Gulf of Carpinteria. If you decide to travel there to see these clouds, choose a period from late September to early November. It was 2012 when the sky turned first ominous dark, then yellow. After that, blue gelatinous balls started to fall to the ground. A man from the UK found these balls outside during a hailstorm. He was walking to his garage when he spotted something unusually bright among the whitish hailstones. When researchers examined this jelly rain, they found out the balls were made from the substance used in diapers or potting soil. It's used to absorb liquid. It's still unclear whether the balls fell from the sky, or maybe the melting ice made a few already existing crystals expand in the blink of an eye. Huge white lumps over your head are called mammatus clouds. They can make you believe the sky is falling. Most clouds form when the air rises into the atmosphere, but not mammatus ones. 
They appear when moist and cool air goes down and mixes with dry air. The result? Unique puffed rice clouds. By the way, if you spot this phenomenon, bad weather is just around the corner. Oh, mama! Colorful nacreous clouds occur extremely high in the atmosphere. I mean, twice as high as a commercial airplane's cruising altitude. The air at such heights is extremely dry and cold. Ice crystals in nacreous clouds are much smaller than those that form more common clouds. They scatter light in a different way. And this gives the clouds their mother-of-pearl appearance. Blood rain looks more terrifying than any horror movie. But in reality, there's nothing strange or unnatural about this weather phenomenon. People have known about such scarlet-tinted rains since the time of ancient Rome. Sometimes, powerful winds lift red dust into the atmosphere and carry it far, far away to another galaxy. <laughs> in the end, this dust gets mixed with clouds, which colors the rain. By the way, dust from coal mines can make the rain black. Pollen is responsible for yellow rains. And some other kinds of dust can turn the rainwater white. In Australia, it sometimes rains spiders. That's because these creatures can balloon. That's a highly unusual way of traveling. A spider climbs to the very top of a tall tree or shrub. And then it spins several strands of silk. These strands help the spider to be carried away by the wind. It's not easy to spot ballooning, but sometimes, if the weather is especially damp and unpleasant, mass ballooning happens. And then, you can't help but pay attention. Millions of spiders set off on a journey to find another place with better conditions. It may seem like it's snowing outside, but no, those are spiders drifting down to the ground. Ever see huge round disks in the sky? Most likely, those were lenticular clouds. They usually form over large and high places, like mountains or hills. When strong winds bump into some barrier, this creates an air wave. The air kind of wraps around the obstacle, and the higher the barrier is, the colder the air that's rising over it becomes. At some point, the moisture it contains turns into water droplets, and they form the unusual clouds. Lenticular clouds can look like waves, a pizza, or even a stack of pancakes. How yummy! Volcanic tornadoes are possibly one of the most terrifying natural phenomena. When a volcano erupts, it spews red-hot rock and ash high into the air. As for solid lava pieces and hot gases, they travel down the volcano slope. When this flow moves down, some of the trapped gases begin to rise and spin at the same time. They get squeezed by the surrounding air, which makes them spin faster and faster. That's how a volcanic tornado gets born. Luckily, this phenomenon has a very short lifespan. On March 19, 2018, the inhabitants of Alabama had to run for their lives. Otherwise, they would have been hit by huge chunks of ice falling from the sky. It was the infamous hailstorm that caused millions of dollars worth of damage. After the hailstorm, the area looked gloomy. Broken shop windows, smashed car windshields, busted billboards, holes in the roofs. At least, researchers got excited when they found a hailstone near the town of Cullman. This softball-sized monster was more than 5 inches across. No wonder it set a new state record. Cylindrical snow donuts occur when a wind gust decides to make a snowball. It starts to roll some snow across a snowy area. If it were a real snowball, it would eventually become too heavy for the wind to move. But the snow donut center is hollowed out. This happens because its inner layer is too thin and is blown away when the donut is formed. This makes it lighter than a snowball, and that's why it also rolls farther. Unfortunately, you just can't go and find snow donuts. They're rare because they need very precise conditions to appear. Moonbows are a much rarer phenomenon than rainbows. They're caused by moonlight rather than direct sunlight and occur only when the moon is near full. Moonbows are dim and often seem to be white, but it's just an illusion. The human eye is just not sensitive enough to catch all the colors. Lightning balls are small floating spheres of light. They can be orange, yellow, or even red. Sometimes lightning balls descend from the sky. In other cases, they appear out of nowhere, 
hovering several feet above the ground. They don't emit any heat or produce very little sound. Lightning balls can bounce off objects. If they come across something electrical, like a TV, they usually disappear with a quiet pop, leaving behind the smell of sulfur. But lightning balls can also start fires or explode. Scientists believe lightning balls might be connected with thunderstorms, but there's no solid proof yet. Fog bows are almost white, pale blue on the inside, and faint red on the outside. You have higher chances of seeing a fog bow over the cold sea or ocean when warm air comes into contact with much colder air. This phenomenon also occurs when the sun is bright, and the fog is thin enough for the light to get through. Pele's hair is thin lava threads. They look golden and pretty, but don't even think about picking them up. Yeah, they can harm you. The wind sometimes catches small droplets of lava coming from active volcanoes. These droplets get carried miles away from the vent. They get stretched into super-thin glass wires, also called hair lava. Some strands can be as long as 6 feet. In March 2018, those who looked up in the sky in northern Nevada saw one of the rarest and most bizarre clouds ever. It was a horseshoe cloud. Such a vortex happens when a flat cloud travels over a column of warm, rising air. This air not only gives the cloud its impressive shape, but also adds some spin to its movement. But you've got to be quick! Horseshoe clouds are very fleeting and usually last for only several minutes. Frost flowers bloom on young sea ice in the Arctic Ocean or on thin lake ice. They're fragile and delicate ice crystals. These structures grow during temperature changes. They draw moisture from the ice surface and rise, capturing bacteria and salt. You can find frost flowers in Antarctica, too. But wherever these crystals grow, people know disappointingly very little about them. Still, they're awfully pretty. <laughs>